Good morning. Uh, I now call to order the organizational meeting of the Newport News School Board for Monday, July 1st, 2019. A quorum is present to transact the business of the school division. We appreciate all in attendance. The purpose of this meeting is to approve organizational matters as required by the Code of Virginia. I am opening this organizational meeting because the term of the school board chairman expires at midnight on June 30th. As customary, the superintendent opens and leads the meeting until the school board appoints a chairman, and we will do so in this meeting today. Before we conduct the invocation and pledge, I'd like to take a moment to welcome our newest board member, Mr. Nazea Gore, the 2019-20 student representative to the school board. Mr. Gore is a senior at Warwick High School, and good morning. Good morning, sir. And thank you for joining us. Let's give a round And Isaiah, we look forward to serving with you and we'll provide an official introduction um, at the August meeting, but we appreciate you being here this morning. I also would like to welcome Mr. Andy Perry, our division-wide and middle school teacher of the year, Mr. Perry, who will provide the invocation and lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Good morning, Mr. Perry. Good morning. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, it's an honor to have an opportunity to address the school board as you prepare for the 2019-2020 school year. The business before you is vitally important as we welcome our new class of students to Newport News and congratulate our most recent graduates. I implore you to prioritize the task before you in order to make decisions that will benefit our community stakeholders most effectively and efficiently. I have brought with me some fruits of our labor from this year uh, from the Crittenden Garden uh, and I look forward to the growth for our new year. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, good luck and thank you. We will now rise and recite the Pledge of Allegiance. Uh, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Thank you, sir. And thank you, Mr. Curry. Andy is a seventh grade teacher grade life science uh, and advanced phys physical science teacher at Crittenden Middle School, where he also serves as the STEM lead teacher. Mr. Perry's instruction extends beyond the classroom, and as you see this morning, he, uh, him, he and the students uh, have a greenhouse, they've built a water tower, uh, and an automatic gardening system powered by solar panels. And we appreciate you bringing some of the fruits of your labor with you this morning. <laughs> Andy will... Uh, Andy, it's, a, uh, it's an honor for you to be here, and we thank you for your service to the school division. So with that being said, our first item on the agenda is uh, the board organization. At this time, the school board will elect a chairman for the 2019-20 school year. Are there any nominations? Uh, Mr. Superintendent, I have a nomination for chairman. Uh, I nominate Mr. Gary Hunter. Second. There's a nomination and a second. Any further nominations? Hearing none, uh, for the Office of Super Superintendent are closed. Um, and we'll go ahead and take the roll. Superintendent? Mm -hmm. Chair. <laughs> School Board Chairman, right? <laughs> <laughs> Look, uh, one job, just one job. Today. All right. Hearing none uh, uh, and, a, and having a second, uh, we'll, we'll, any reservations? Any com conversation? Mrs. Buffalo, we'll take the roll. Dr. Best? Four. Mr. Brown? Four. Mr. Harris? Four. Mr. Hunter? Four. Ms. Simons? Four. Motion carries 5-0 to elect Mr. Hunter as chairman. I would now like to introduce our 2019-20 school board chairman, Mr. Gary Hunter. Let's give him a round of applause. <laughs> and Mr. Hunter, I will <laughs> relinquish the, the gavel. Uh, thank you, Dr. Parker. I tell you what, um, Superintendent, you and I can change pay. It would be fine with me. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to, we can swap a little bit. Uh, anyway, well, again, uh, I want to first thank my, uh, my board members to, um, again, appointing me again for, I guess, a third year. Um, I, I just want to thank each one of you very much. I look forward to this 2019-2020 year. Uh, before I say any more, we're going to move the agenda. Uh, my first um, order of business would be, again, at this time, the school board will elect a vice chair for the 2019-2020 school year. Are there any nominations? Um, Mr. Chair, 
I would like to nominate um, Ms. Lisa Searles Law as vice chair. You heard the motion, I mean, nomination. Is there a second? Oh, second. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you heard the nomination. Um, are there any further nominations for the office of vice chair? Uh, there being none, uh, Ms. Lisa Searles Laws has been nominated to serve as the 2019 2020 school board vice chair. Is there any discussion regarding the nomination? Uh, there being none, uh, Ms. Lisa Searles Laws has been selected as the 2019 2020 school board, and we need to call a roll first. Ms. Buffalo, call a roll. My pleasure. Dr. Best? Four. Mr. Brown? Four. Mr. Harris? Four. Mr. Hunter? Four. Ms. Simons? Four. Motion carries 5 0 from Mrs. Sewell's Law as board vice chair. Okay. And, and Ms. In Ms. Searle's Law's absent, um, um, I know she's going to do a phenomenal job. Um, she, had some, she had already had some work related business that she could not be here today. And so uh, we will pass on that um, outstanding information and selection. So that being the case, uh, we'll move the agenda to our consent agenda. Uh, items number 2.01, personnel report. 2.02, minutes, special meeting on June 4th, 2019. 2.03, minutes from work session, June 18th, 2019. 2.04, minutes, special meeting, June 18th, 2019. 2.05, uh, 2018-2019 school board meeting calendar. 2.06, appointment of the clerk and deputy clerk of the school board. 2.07, appointment of the of the agents and do, deputy agents of the school board. 2.08, appointment of persons to serve in the absence of the superintendent. 2.09, reimbursement resolution for the use of DPSA funding. 2.10, impact aid authorization. 2.11, 2019, 2020, Vision school tuition. 2012, I mean 2.12, 2019, 2020, tuition rate for non Virginia resident students. 2.13, resolution amending resolution 0911. Can you have a motion for approval of the consent agenda? Mr. Chairman, I move to adopt the consent agenda. Second. You heard the motion. And the second, time for the question. There being none, Ms. Buffalo, please call the roll. Dr. Bess? Four. Mr. Brown? Four. Mr. Ely? Four. Mr. Harris? Four. Mr. Hunter? Four. Ms. Simons? Four. Motion carries 6 0. At this time, we have the personnel. Yes, sir. At this time, we'll um, turn it over to Dr. Parker for the personnel actions. And thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, in that uh, consent agenda were three personnel appointments, which are uh, uh, leadership appointments um, in our central office uh, staffing. And I'd like to, at this time, introduce our new chief academic officer, Dr. James Pohl. Uh, James, would you stand, please? And uh, Dr. Pohl is currently serving as the executive director of secondary teaching and learning in Virginia Beach City Public Schools. Uh, Dr. Pohl has been an educator for 23 years. He began his career as a math teacher in Norfolk Public Schools. He worked as an assistant principal in Pascatank County High School in Elizabeth City and at Cox High School in Virginia Beach. He continued his career in Virginia Beach by serving at, as the principal in positions at Princess Anne Middle School and Princess Anne High Schools where he, um, before moving on to central office. In addition, he has worked for many years as an adjunct faculty member in Old Dominion's educational leadership and policy, uh, program. And uh, Dr. Pohl is accompanied by his lovely wife. Uh, if you go ahead and introduce your wife, James. Thank you, Dr. Parker. This is my wife, Darcy Pohl. She is also a high school teacher in Virginia Beach. She has been for 23 years as well. That's right. And, and welcome, welcome both. We'd like to wel uh, welcome you, James, to Newport News Public Schools, where good things are happening. And we look forward to, to your leadership. Let's give Dr. Pohl a round of applause. <laughs> And second, I'd like to introduce uh, our new Executive Director of Curriculum and Development, uh, Dr. Joanne Jones. And Dr. Jones, would you please, there you go. Uh, Dr. Jones is currently serving as the Director of Curriculum and Instruction in Caroline County Public Schools. 
Uh, Dr. Jones began her career as an educator 28 years ago as a high school English teacher in Hertford County Public School, where she also served as an assistant principal. Dr. Jones served in 12 years as an elementary and secondary principal in Birdie County Public Schools, Hertford County Public Schools, and Halifax County Public Schools. In addition, she's worked as a transitional coach for the uh, New North Carolina Department of Public Instruction, and she is also a former school board member in Birdie? Hertford, Hertford County. <laughs> Uh, Dr. Jones is currently still uh, still in Caroline County and will be joining us uh, at uh, once we work out the transitional time frame. Dr. Jones, do you have any family members here you'd like to introduce? Yes. Mm -hmm. I have my daughter Cameron. Cameron is a student at Hampton University, so mm -hmm. that's that's right. Right. <laughs> 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 All right. Congratulations and let's give Dr. Jones a round of applause. Our third nominee is we didn't have to look far from home. She's a, she's a, a, a homegrown uh, educator and instructional leader. I'd like to introduce Lori Wall as our new director of elementary curriculum. Uh, Ms. Wall is currently serving uh, with us as the elementary instructional supervisor uh, for K through two, K through three, and um, in Newport News. Mrs. Wall, Ms. Wall has served as an elementary teacher, reading recovery teacher, early literacy interventionist, reading specialist, elementary instructional specialist, and instructional supervisor. We've gotten a lot of work out of her. <laughs> <laughs> and, in addition, she uh, is, is your husband here with you today? Actually, he's at some team with my kids. All right, and he is also an employee. All right, he's also an employee as well of Newport News. Uh, Mrs. Wall will be a, uh, is also an adjunct faculty member with the College of Women Murray where she trains reading specialists. So a very strong instructional leader. She'll take over our elementary program. We're so excited to have your leadership uh, impact our students. So thank you so much, and uh, we're looking forward to good work. Let's give Lori a <laughs> And that concludes the appointments for, for, for this meeting. Uh, thank you, Dr. Parker. And again, uh, how about another congratulations to those uh, three new <laughs> employees here at Newport News Public Schools where great things are happening. Uh, we have one action item, item number 3.01, new and review um, part of your package. Uh, there's a number of them, school division goals and objectives, which was new, tobacco and nicotine vape, vapor revisions. Uh, we had the comprehensive plan, which was new, the school board member compensation, which was new, uh, the school board member liability insurance, which was new, school board work session and retreat, which was revised, School Board Activity Funds, which was new. Teacher Planning Time, revised. School Board, no. School Year, School Day Revision. Physical Examination of Students, Remove Grace, period. And then we had the Transfer Student Wage Credit Draft. So can we have a motion for that approval? So moved. Second. You heard the motion and you heard the second. Uh, Tom, for the question. One question, are all of the revisions uh, required by the General Assembly, the, all the proposed revisions? Dr. Parker. There were a variety that were General Assembly, then there were VSBA, and then also there were division policies in that package. Uh, Mrs. Uh, uh, Tracy can answer any questions you may have regarding any individual policies. But there were there were three drop motivators behind those. One is General Assembly legislation. The other was VSBA uh, policy um, policy revisions, and the other were division uh, division uh, internal revisions. And they were all presented to us last month. Is yes. That right? Okay. All, all of them were presented. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Any more questions? Uh, there being none, Ms. Buffalo, please call the roll. Dr. Best? Four. Mr. Brown? Four. Mr. Ely? Four. Mr. Harris? Four. Mr. Hunter? Four. Ms. Simons? Four. Motion carries 6-0. Right, thank you. Uh, we'll move on to reports and information. First is uh, 4.01, availability of policies and procedure menus. Is there any? Is the notice? Oh, this is just, oh, this is just a required notice uh, the annual notes to the public that copies of the division's policy and procedure manuals are available to the public and employees in the libraries of each school in each Newport News Public Library and online 
on the policies and procedures website at www.nnschools.org slash policies and on the NNPS intranet. Okay. And okay, we have another report, school board assignments. Those were in your package. And then we can just, uh, once you make your selections, you can pass those on to uh, Ms. Buffalo. And then our last uh, report would be comments from the superintendent. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, thank you. I've wrapped up my first year at Newport News Public Schools, and I have uh, truly enjoyed getting to know uh, not only each of you, but also the staff and our, uh, our leadership in our schools and our students. I'm looking forward to continuing my work and make the, to make the school division a great uh, place for all students to learn, work, and grow. Uh, congratulations again to Mr. Hunter uh, for your second year appointment and, uh, and Vice Chairman Searles Law. Look forward to working with you and, uh, and as we prepare students for to be college, career, and citizen ready. The mayor hosted his first city and school advisory committee <clears throat> meeting last Tuesday to provide us with an opportunity for regular open dialogue about the goals and needs of the school division. Following that meeting, uh, the school board uh, and city uh, council held a joint meeting, a uh, joint work session, to discuss capital improvement uh, procedures and the plan for the uh, Huntington, for Huntington Middle School. The city manager provided some insight into uh, a recently proposed budget at that time as well. We have a new joint uh, meeting uh, scheduled for September 10th at 4 p.m. I'd like to just speak briefly and say that I, f I felt the dialogue around the table was productive. Um, although uh, we, we, uh, we did not see everything that we wanted in that uh, budget that's presented by the city manager, um, I do believe that there was some good dialogue around how do we meet some of the challenges of the school division in terms of our facilities, uh, Huntington Middle School moving forward, and I, and I look forward to further dialogue with the city as, as we work through some of those challenges. Last week, we also held our first summer leadership conference, and a lot of dancing going on. Uh, some folks still have sore feet in here. Uh, over, the, over the course of the two days, our school leadership teams attended several professional development sessions moderated by our Department of School Leadership and the Curriculum, uh, and the curriculum Development Department. I'd like to thank all of our leaders in, in the room and, uh, who attended and participated and supported the leadership uh, retreat for our principals and assistant principals last week. It was a very good two days of learning for our, for our building leaders. I also uh, have some good news to share. Six of our schools earned the Virginia Board of Education Exemplar Performance uh, School Awards. Those, these new awards recognize schools for exceeding state accreditation standards, narrowing the achievement gap, and improving outcomes for students. Two schools earned the Board of Education's Highest Achievement Award, Deer Park Elementary School and General Stanford Elementary Schools. And four schools earned the Board of Education's Continuous Improvement Award, Discovery STEM Academy, Dutro Elementary School, Sanford Elementary School, and Denby High School. Congratulations to their staff and students. Let's give them a round of applause. <laughs> and we look forward to bringing a full uh, uh, accreditation update to the board um, later this summer in our August meeting uh, to give the board some insight into how our other schools are doing. The STEP Work Readiness Program is underway. I attended the first day of our STEP day, our STEP uh, program, where, where we had uh, roughly about 160 students uh, learning for four days in preparation for their uh, work experiences, which they will um, uh, take on next week. They'll, they'll be assigned to their work sites. Um, and SPARK will begin next week as well. Uh, this summer, we will serve over 6,000 students in various SPARK programs. Over the next two months, we are also focused on staff professional development. The Ignite Summer Learning Academy offers nearly 80 course offerings across all content areas and grade levels. The classes are organized into three strands aligned with our teaching and learning framework. I encourage our instructional staff to take advantage of these um, opportunities and visit our website for a list, complete list of course offerings. All staff members are encouraged to attend our annual Innovate Technology Conference, which will be held on August 7th and 8th at Hines Middle School. Our technology staff has been hard, working hard and preparing for some great sessions for our staff from Innovate Teaching Practices to State of the Art uh, website practices. Now, I'll, I'll ensure that Tracy, that, uh, excuse me, Mrs. Buffalo, puts the uh, schedule for those events on your calendars if you'd like to stop by. Some great learning. A lot of teachers come in over the summer to get some professional development, and it is not required, and it is a packed house 
which is something that is very interesting uh, here in Newport News. Um, so visit our website to register for those course offerings, and we look forward to seeing some of our, our, our instructional leaders uh, in, in, the, in the house on August 7th and 8th as well. A couple of reminders, all schools and offices will be closed on Thursday in observance of Independence Day, and we are now on our summer schedule. So we're, we're working on Monday through, Monday through Thursdays, and Fridays uh, offices are closed. And that will be all um, closed through August 16th. So we'll be on that summer schedule to August 16th. I wish everyone a relaxing and rejuvenating summer, and I encourage everyone to take a well-deserved break and enjoy some summer activities. And that concludes my remarks, Mr. Chairman. Uh, thank you, Dr. Parker. So we'll move the agenda to 5.01 um, protocols for addressing the board. Are there no cards? Okay, we'll move on then to matters by the school board. Uh, first up will be uh, Mr. Nazir Gore. Welcome to the board. So this is your time to um, let folks hear your, your comments. Okay. <laughs> I believe that everyone has faith in something, whether it be through educational means, children, or even science. But right now, in this instance, I want to thank all of you for putting your faith in me, and I hope to make the 2020 school year a productive one. Thank you. Okay. Well, thank you. And uh, welcome aboard again. Thank you. Uh, Mrs. Simons. Thank you very much. Um, I enjoyed being invited to attend the apprenticeship graduation for some electrical workers. As many of you know, I am the chair of the board for New Horizons uh, Regional Education Centers, the Career and Technical Center there, and I was invited to speak. And I just want to remind our students when you're in high school to kind of take control of your of your destiny and um, we want you to go to college but uh, we also have other opportunities for you in career and technical education at New Horizons and one of the opportunities that's out there for high school graduates is to go into apprenticeships and um, a couple of the apprentices that I met in electrical work were making eighty thousand dollars for ten months work so that's amazing, but it was a it was a five year apprenticeship. So I just want to recommend that to everyone, and um, I again want to thank the graduates this year. You know, school is hard, and I, I keep trying to remind everybody in the community that the demands on our students are really hard right now. It's not just about um, you know learning, but you're you're assessed with these SOL tests. You're tested all the time. That diploma means something. And um, as educators, our job is difficult too because we've got to keep up with the technology and make sure that our students are ready for the jobs of tomorrow. And that means um, teaching them things about coding and computer science, like things that we didn't have to do before. So we do need the community's support as we meet this challenge. Um, the challenge of having our kids ready for testing and having them ready for the high-tech economy. We need the community's support. And that means that we need to pay teachers well. We need to continually give raises. That means our budget needs to grow every year. So um, I would just ask the community to think about supporting Newport News Public Schools and understand that our mission is difficult and we need all hands on deck to, to move our um, city's education system forward. So thank you very much. Thank you, Ms. Simons. Mr. Ely. I want to say congratulations to all the students that participated in the Congressional Art Competition. I was fortunate to be on the board for that, but Congressman Robert Scott went very well. We had it last week in D.C. i also like to thank all the kids for all their hard work that they did over the school year for graduating. They got a summer, and thanks to all our great SPARK programs to start next week, they have a lot in store for them. And that's it. Yeah, thank you, thank you, Mr. Ely. Uh, Dr. Bess. Um, good morning. Good morning. Um, I, too, concur with um, my uh, fellow school board member, um, Ms. Simons, as far as it being very difficult uh, for the graduates, I would first like to congratulate the graduates. And I also would like to thank everyone that works um, with our students, um, because in addition to educating them, we also have that facet called social, me social media that just adds a whole nother dynamic um, to what we have to do. So congratulations to the graduates and thank you to all of you um, that work so hard with our students to make sure that they are successful. I would like to wish all of those students that are um, 
heading to college and whatever other um, career aspirations, I wish them well. And just to remember the um, foundational things that they learned here in Newport News um, Public Schools. I would like to thank the public for um, voting for me and, and for having me to serve this first year. I have learned so much this year. I'm looking forward to the next three years and I hope to be a voice um, for them. So I encourage everyone to get a little rest this summer and get prepared for a great um, next school year. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Bess. Uh, Mr. Harris. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I would like to congratulate the three new uh, administrators. Uh, I look forward to your leadership and uh, thank you for choosing uh, Newport News to uh, serve. Uh, also, uh, I'd like to thank Dr. Parker and all the administration staff uh, for graduating, uh, I think, was it close to 1,600, 1,700 students? I think 12. Am I, am okay. I in the 1,200 range? About 1,200 students. Appreciate that. A great job uh, on ensuring that, you know, we, we are producing young people that is ready for uh, this, this, this crazy world out there. Also, congratulations to the uh, chairman and the new uh, select uh, vice chairman. Um, I just want to say that, you know, we as a board is required to um, get results. And this is a result-oriented business. Uh, we put mandates on our children to succeed. Uh, we put mandates on our children to meet certain gates. Uh, we meet certain mandates on our kids to graduate. And so I, me as a board member, I view my role as the same. Uh, it's great to have a lot of dialogue, but dialogue does not bring you the things that this school division requires. All right, we are required to bring results. We are required to ensure that this school is fully funded. Those are our mandates. And right now, uh, uh, the way I feel, I don't. I, I think we've we, we've we've not met some of those goals. So regardless of what we have to do, uh, regardless <laughs> of what relationships we have to mend, build, or cut loose, uh, we are required to deliver results. Uh, this is not a a, uh, a popularity contest. This is not a a a, a position. Um, that you search accolades. This is a position to deliver results. So I hope this year, uh, starting this fall, that we deliver results. Uh, because it comes a point in time where we cannot point to the city council and get, hey, you know, you guys are not giving us what we want. Uh, we, I think we have to look internally. And we really have to do some self-assessments and ensure that we are doing the things that's going to create results. If not, uh, we need to set those triggers in place. As I mentioned before, uh, there comes a point in time where you have to say, well, guess what? If this does not happen, what are the course of actions one, two, and three? And stick to those. Uh, excuse me for rambling on, but uh, uh, thank you for the time, Mr. Chairman. I'm looking forward to another year. Thanks. Thank you, Mr. Harris. Uh, Mr. Brown. All right. Well, as we close out a year, it's a great time to reflect. Uh, I want to congratulate uh, uh, Superintendent Dr. Parker for uh, bringing us uh, three great selections of officers. Uh, looking forward to the great things that you're going to be doing in this upcoming year and uh, really excited about uh, the team that has been assembled. Uh, we've seen some fantastic results uh, this year. It's been a, I think it's been a really good year, positive year. A lot of uh, good things have happened. Uh, we have made some significant movement. Uh, I like that uh, now we've moved past talking about whether or not Huntington uh, will be funded, uh, but it's a matter of how much and when. So I think that uh, um, we want to reflect on that, that those are some good, good accomplishments. And we'll look forward to uh, this next year. We need to, to move past, uh, uh, of course, uh, uh, Huntington and move into other uh, school facilities as well uh, where we do need some, some additional funding. So as we kick off that capital improvement budget season, I uh, want us to look forward to uh, opening up the dialogue for, uh, for our, truly all of our needs, uh, which are, as, as we mentioned before, which are, which are greater than, uh, than Huntington. Uh, 
with that in mind, it's been a, a great uh, graduation season. Looking forward to another graduation that's going to take place in August. I'm um, <laughs> excited about the graduates that we will be honoring who will be walking across the stage. Their graduation is just as momentous, if not probably more momentous, mm -hmm. because of uh, the challenges that they go through. And, and so proud of those graduates who will persevere. So there are, there are students who are in summer school with us right now who are going to persevere. They've made the commitment. And I really uh, appreciate that. Hats off to you and honor that commitment. And I'm looking forward to, as a board member, uh, seeing them come across the stage and uh, shaking some of their hands uh, and, and seeing that uh, those, those graduate numbers. Those, those are really the folks who get me uh, very excited. Uh, and that's how we get to our uh, such a high uh, on-time graduation rate, uh, I think, is, is the hard work that is being done right now in summer school for those, um, for those students who have decided to, to stick it out. And we know that that is money in our economy and money in their pockets. Uh, and so that's where, you know, I want to, at this point, pause and reflect on just really a great year and hats off to all of the uh, administration and the teachers and the staff who uh, work so hard and, and entirely so on behalf of our students that uh, great things are happening in Newport News and great things are possible in Newport News that really uh, with our uh, schools, everything and anything is possible to the, to the uh, uh, wildest dreams of a child. I was pausing and reflecting this weekend on uh, the discussions that are made about public schools. And, and uh, I'd like to say the demise of public school has been greatly exaggerated. Uh, I was just uh, talking with my wife. We were going over the um, schools for our own, own child and thinking and reflecting on our chances. Uh, you look at most Ivy League schools, and I'll pick out Harvard and Princeton as an example. Harvard, 63% of all the students who come in to their entering class are from public schools around this country. Not from elite private schools, uh, but from public schools. So the same schools that our children attend, those are, the, those are your kids' chances of getting into Harvard. Getting into Princeton, it's 60%. 60% of all the kids who are entering the classes at Princeton come from public schools. So. I want to just encourage the, all the teachers and the staff who are working with our kids that you are really the, the dream builders. You are the ones who are going to enable and allow uh, even the wildest dreams of our children. And what, with the work that you do, it is possible. You make it possible. And it really, the, what education does, it changes the life of a, a child, changes the life of a family, changes an entire generation. And that's how you really turn around an economy in the long run. And with all that being said, uh, Mr. Chairman and the rest of the members of the board, I want to continue to challenge us that we need to, uh, on the operating budget side, we need to get down to a revenue sharing model, revenue sharing agreement, because that's what our students need, that's what they deserve, and it's a revenue sharing agreement. Sure that we, I want to have an overwhelming share of that 60% of the kids who are going to Ivy League schools to come from Newport News Public Schools. I want us to have an overwhelming share. We already have, I think, an outside share, right. um, more than more than most other school divisions uh, around the country. We have an outside share, believe it or not, despite what you may have been told in the uh, in the media and in the public. Uh, but I want us to have an even greater overwhelming share of those students who are attending the top schools uh, in this country, and all the students who are going to as well the apprentice schools and and, and the other elite trade um, schools around this around this country. So getting to that revenue sharing agreement that's critical. This next year, I will, we really focus on that. Uh, but in the near term, uh, focusing on capital uh, budget, that let's make sure that we focus on giving a higher percentage of the budget than we have been uh, in previous years and uh, continue uh, moving forward with uh, revitalizing our buildings. All right, thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Brown. Uh, I guess it's B from the time uh, we go, go back to work and get to work. So again, great things are happening in Newport News Public Schools. Uh, uh, first, I want to thank um, Dr. Parker for an outstanding first year here in Newport News Public Schools. Um, you did not let us down. Um, we are not at the top yet, but guess what? We've climbed a lot. To, we've taken many steps this year uh, to reaching that goal. So again, thank you and the team that you have um, gathered around you and thank those three brand new uh, appointees. Uh, congratulations on your appointment. Um, welcome, Mr. Gore. You. We, you have big, big, big shoes to fill. <laughs> uh, um, this is my, uh, okay, I guess today will be my starting my sixth year on the board, and every student rep has been outstanding. I mean, absolutely outstanding. And I, and I have no, no problem that you will uh, even top them. So again, welcome. To Vice Chair, uh, or former Vice Chair, Mr. Brown, uh, on behalf of this, this board, 
uh, we really, really appreciate all the guidance that you have given us, and particularly uh, for the raises for the teachers. <laughs> I, I guess we can tell you you are the raise agent. <laughs> <laughs> and does Mr. Brown have a new position with the SBA? And, and Mr. <laughs> Mr. Brown is currently the vice president, vice chair of the Tidewater region uh, for the VSBA, and now seeks, with our approval, he seeks the uh, chair position. So um, we look forward to that. You've got six board members standing right behind you, and I, I know you're going to be very successful. You're going to win. And again, there will be another great thing happening in Newport News Public Schools where uh, Newport News will be running the Tidewater District in hell with Mr. Uh, Mr. Brown. So, Mr. Brown, uh, again, thank you for the two years uh, sitting right beside me, and um, uh, I know there are great things happening for you and that uh, you will prove to be a, a gem for New Purdue Public Schools at your next appointment. So, Mr. Brown, I want to give you a <laughs> I, I did have an opportunity on last Wednesday. Uh, I was invited to um, give a opening remarks at the Leadership Matters Conference. Let me tell you, I, I was going to stay all day. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't. Uh, but um, the energy in the place was uh, was powerful. Um, the teachers, the comments from Mr. Wright, he says one thing that stuck out. He says, hey, if I walk around and I see you with a frown on your face, I'm going to give you a hug. <laughs> I'm going to find out what's wrong. And uh, well, we're leaders. And as our Dr. Parker stated to us, uh, or to those that were in attendance, he says, hey, you know, leaders need to find out, you know, what makes us great, and we need to fix things that were right, and fix things, no, do things better that are right, things that are wrong, we need to fix them. And basically he says, you know, what we need to really look at is the, uh, look what follows the buck. Newport News is an outstanding organization, school system, but, and that but is a reality. So, our superintendent told us to uh, follow the butt. <laughs> and so if you didn't learn anything from that particular, it was to follow the butt because those butts will get you in trouble. And um, those are the problems, and we're going to fix those butts uh, this year. And so, Dr. Parker, I did take that from uh, my short time being there. So remember, let's follow the butts, and if we can get rid of those butts, <laughs> uh, we will uh, have another successful year. Uh, so that being said, um, I'm looking forward again to a, a 2019, 2020 year. I want to thank my board members for having the trust in me to lead this team for a third year. Uh, again, thank you very much for your um, confidence in me. Uh, that being said, um, if there's no other comments or what have you, we need to go into a closed session, I believe. So, uh, Mr. Brown, or okay, I do have a motion, Mr. Chairman, uh, pursuant to Section 2.2-3711A of the Code of Virginia, Subsection One. I move the school board convene a closed meeting for the purpose of discussing the performance of a specific public officer. You heard the motion. Is there a second? Second. You heard the motion. Second. The time for the question. There being none, Ms. Buffalo, please call the roll. Dr. Best. Four. Mr. Brown. Four. Mr. Ely. Four. Mr. Harris. Four. Mr. Hunter. Four. Ms. Simons. Four. Motion carries 6 0. Thank you. We will convene to our closed meeting. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah.